going through a divorce can be one of the most challenging periods in a person's life, and it's especially critical for wives to have a clear understanding of their legal rights and responsibilities during this time. In the state of New York, where divorce laws govern everything from asset distribution to spousal support, being well informed and prepared is key to ensuring a fair and equitable resolution. Legal rights in a divorce. In New York, both parties have certain legal rights during a divorce. These rights include the ability to obtain a fair division of marital property, request spousal support, and, if applicable, seek child custody and support. New York operates under a no fault divorce system meaning that one can file for divorce on the grounds that the marriage has irretrievably broken down for at least six months. However, the division of assets, spousal support, and child-related matters are separate issues that must be resolved either through negotiation, mediation, or litigation. Equitable distribution and its impact on wives. When a marriage comes to an end in New York, the distribution of marital property is not conducted on an equal basis, but rather an equitable one. While each spouse has equal rights to marital property, the court can review specific factors regarding the marriage that can affect their determination of the property distribution. The outcome of this distribution can significantly affect the financial futures of both parties and often, wives may experience this impact differently due to various social and economic factors. How equitable distribution affects wives differently. In many cases, wives may be disproportionately affected by equitable distribution for several reasons. For instance, if a wife has sacrificed career advancement opportunities for the sake of the family or to support her husband's career, she may find herself at a financial disadvantage during the division process. To avoid disparity, the courts will consider the non-monetary contributions to the marriage, such as homemaking, child-rearing, and supporting the education or career of the other spouse. These contributions can affect the distribution of assets in a way that may benefit the wife, recognizing her indirect contributions to the accumulation of marital property. The role of prenuptial agreements in divorce settlements. Prenuptial agreements play a significant role in divorce proceedings in New York. These agreements are contracts entered into before marriage that outline the division of assets and financial responsibilities in the event of a divorce. New York courts generally respect these agreements, provided they were entered into freely by both parties, with full disclosure, and without coercion, and are not unconscionable or fundamentally unfair at the time of the divorce. Rights to the marital home during and after divorce. The marital home is often one of the most significant assets to be considered during a divorce in New York. Not only does it carry considerable financial value, but it also holds emotional significance making the decision of who retains the home, or whether it should be sold, a complex and often contentious issue. For wives, who may have been the primary homemaker or caretaker for children, the rights to the marital home are particularly important to understand. Possession and use of the marital home. In New York, both spouses have a right to occupy the marital home during the divorce process unless a court orders otherwise. However, one spouse may be granted exclusive use and possession of the home during the divorce proceedings, usually when it is in the best interest of the children or to protect a spouse from harm. Selling or retaining the marital home. Factors influencing a wife's entitlements. After the divorce, the marital home can either be sold, or one spouse can buy out the other's interest. To decide on this matter, the court will look at various factors, including each spouse's financial ability to maintain the home, the needs of any children from the marriage, and the equitable distribution of all marital property. Spousal support. Alimony. Considerations. In New York divorce cases, spousal support, historically known as alimony, is a critical factor that can shape the financial well-being of a wife post-divorce. This financial support aims to mitigate the economic impact of a divorce, particularly on a lower-earning or non-earning spouse. For wives who may have devoted years to homemaking or raising children, understanding how spousal support works in New York is essential to ensuring fair compensation and financial security after the dissolution of a marriage. Determining eligibility for spousal support in New York. Spousal support in New York is not automatic. It is based on the financial necessity of one spouse and the other spouse's ability to pay. To determine eligibility, the court will examine a variety of factors, such as the length of the marriage,
the age and health of both spouses, and the present and future earning capacity of each party. For a wife who has been out of the workforce, or who earns significantly less than her husband, the court will consider her potential to become self-sufficient and whether she needs time and resources to acquire education or training for employment. Duration and modification of spousal support orders. The duration of spousal support in New York is often tied to the length of the marriage, with longer marriages typically resulting in longer periods of support. However, it is intended to be rehabilitative, meaning it should enable the recipient's spouse to become financially independent. The court will set a time frame that is deemed sufficient for this purpose. Child custody and support. In the state of New York, decisions regarding child custody and support are made with the best interests of the child in mind. These matters are treated separately from other aspects of a divorce, such as the division of marital assets or alimony. The goal is to ensure that the needs of the child are met and that they maintain a stable and supportive environment after the divorce. Custody arrangements and their implications for mothers. New York recognizes two types of custody. Legal custody, which pertains to making major decisions about the child's welfare, and physical custody, which concerns where the child will live. Custody can be sole or joint, with joint custody allowing both parents to have an equal say in important decisions and possibly share physical custody. How child support is determined in New York. Child support in New York is determined using the Child Support Standards Act, CSSA, which provides a formula for calculating payments based on the parent's combined income and the number of children. The non-custodial parent is typically required to pay their proportional share of the basic child support obligation, and this amount can be adjusted by the court based on several factors, including the financial resources of each parent, the child's needs, and the non-monetary contributions that the custodial parent makes toward the child's care. This formula takes into account the combined parental income and allocates a percentage of it to the child, based on the number of children being supported. The percentages used are 17% of the combined parental income for one child, 25% for two children, 29% for three children, 31% for four children, at least 35% for five or more children, retirement funds and pensions. In New York, like in many other states, retirement funds and pensions earned during the marriage are considered marital property and are subject to division in a divorce. This includes a wide array of retirement assets such as 401k plans, IRAs, deferred compensation plans, and pension plans. The division of these assets must be handled with care to ensure both parties receive their equitable share without incurring unnecessary taxes or penalties. The use of QDROs for retirement distribution. A qualified domestic relations order, QDRO, is a legal order that is required to divide certain types of retirement plans, such as 401ks and pensions. The QDRO instructs the plan administrator on how to pay the non-employee spouse's share of the plan benefits, known as the alternate payee. The QDRO must comply with the specific plan's rules and federal laws to be considered qualified. The Crete. Social Security Benefits and Divorce. Social security benefits are not considered marital property and therefore are not divided in a divorce in New York. However, divorce can affect eligibility for derivative social security benefits. A person may be entitled to collect social security benefits based on an ex-spouse's work record if the marriage lasted at least 10 years, they are at least 62 years old, they are currently unmarried and the benefit they are entitled to receive based on their own work is less than the benefit they would receive based on their ex-spouse's work. Insurance policies and health care. In the context of a New York divorce, issues surrounding insurance policies and health care coverage are of paramount concern. Parties must understand how their health insurance, life insurance, and potential long-term care insurance will be affected by their divorce. New York law has specific provisions regarding the continuity of health insurance and the treatment of life insurance policies after divorce. Health insurance coverage after divorce. In New York, once a divorce is finalized, an individual may no longer be eligible to remain on their ex-spouse's health insurance plan. However, there are several options for maintaining health coverage after the divorce. COBRA. Individual health insurance plan. Employer-sponsored health insurance. 
Life insurance policies and beneficiary designations. Life insurance is an important component of a divorce settlement, particularly when child support, spousal support, or other financial obligations are involved. In New York, divorcing individuals must consider the following regarding life insurance. Beneficiary changes. Ownership of policies. Long-term care considerations. Long-term care insurance is a consideration for those advancing in age or with health conditions that may require future long-term care services. During a divorce, parties must consider continuation of coverage, eligibility for Medicaid, take the first step toward securing your rights and shaping your future. Reach out to the law offices of Juan Luciano today and let us help you take control of your divorce proceedings with the assurance that your rights, as a wife and a mother, are being ardently defended. Call 212-537-5859 to schedule a consultation.